you do all the editing with them and get kind of all the inspiration done as the, the process goes along when you're working them for like a six month season period you also do sample fittings and that's where a lot of the body intelligence comes in and sample fitting is not the fitting for the show on the model but just the fitting of the clothes like a toile like you'll start with the muslin first I mean I, I know a lot of you guys know this I'm just going over it just in case um, you start with the muslin and then you make change you can make dramatic changes there with the silhouette and all that kind of good stuff and then you start to, and then I usually, usually like to do like a twall fitting, and then I'll do a fitting of the real garment when it comes in, in the real fabric. And then we don't really look at it again until we're in looks process. And looks is when you just try everything on. It happens like the week before the show, and you try all the things on that they have there in every outfit possibility, with every accessory possibility possible, anything, everything. You try it all out. It's our experimentation time. Looks is when we find like we were able to refine. So we've been working with them on the story the whole time, but in looks is when we start to finalize everything. So when we're in the looks process, and so from our looks, what we do is we refine, refine, refine. And sometimes I'll try the same thing on 500 times, like seriously, like six times, seven times. And you change the necklace and you change the belt and you change the jacket on top and da 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 until you come to the and I think the looks process it's good to do four days if you can it's extreme if you don't have a ton of clothes you can usually do it I recommend always giving yourself two looks days because when you sleep on it something happens like you've got to step away um, it just gives you a different perspective and then like at night you have this brilliant idea and the next day you come in and you have a whole new perspective on the board and you'll redo your looks board and you'll be so happy with it so I rec recommend at least two days to do looks, and you need a model to do that. You do that on the model. That way you have a, you have a body, like just a looks model. And uh, so after you do looks, that's when you do the lineup. And that's when you really are, you've been creating your story the whole time, but then you start to see the order and the groups you're putting everything in. So after the lineup, that's when you, um, at the same time you're doing lineup, you do casting. So you've been doing go sees and all that kind of good stuff, editing models, coming up with a philosophy with the casting director, seeing the girls, guys who are available. And then once you have, you, and then you finalize your casting because you figure out based on how many looks you have, how many models you need. Um, and I always, this is gonna be, this is like a t technique tip. I always recommend an 18 change, 16 to 18 change between models. And right, I mean, it's the most important thing ever. And I've been on shows where they're like, oh, we can't do a six. And I'm like, are you crazy? Like, the, the model won't, because it takes, there's only a certain amount of time, no matter, like, what the runway is, there's only a certain, certain amount of time people can change in. And it gets crazy. I mean, I've seen people try to do sixes, and that's when the shows get breaks and there's no models for a little bit. They did sixes. So I always work with 18. That's like a tip and technique that I've used for the shows forever and ever and ever. It's, like, super important. Because there's nothing worse than sitting in a show, and suddenly you know something's going on bad backstage because there's no models. Like, to me, that drives me nuts. It drives me so crazy, because it's like, and suddenly everyone in the audience is like, oh, amateur hour. And like, that's not the assessment any of us want, right? So, it's really, really important with the rotation. So rotations, when you put the models, like you do the lineups, you decide what, what, uh, air, like, uh, excuse me, what lineup, I've been talking all day, what, uh, what uh, <laughs> order you want the looks in, and then, Putting the model, rotation becomes when you put the model in which one, which look. And so your favorite model, just to talk a little bit about that, your favorite model goes in the first look and the last look, really. And if you have two favorite models and you put one in the first look and one in the second look. And usually a favorite I assess is, there's always a girl who I'm like, oh, that's the girl. You know that, and sometimes, it, like last season on Victoria's show, we opened with Lindsay Wixon. And Lindsay Wixon, she's been the Prada girl. She's got like the, t the, the gap teeth and the lips and she's just so amazing looking, you know? And, and I was like, well, you know, I loved her and she came in and like her personality and she's, a, she's like 16, she has a lisp. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like you couldn't be any cuter, like you're, I'm obsessed. And she fit with what we were doing. We were doing this very 60s kind of thing and she was totally that. She was like the Biba girl or something. And so in Victoria and I were really into it. So we opened it and I was like, but I had a thing about like, oh, is she the old product girl? Like, you kind of have to start to look at the identity of the models. And when you're dealing with a little bit of the bigger girls who do have identity, it's like, oh, you know, a girl who's been around forever. Sometimes if she hasn't been doing a show for a while, it's really cool to open with her because everybody will be like, oh my God, really? You brought her back? That's so cool. You know, or it's like, a, 
you know, when you f we fit one of those girls in who hasn't been around for a while and you just throw them in the show in a random place, it's like, that was weird. You know, so you produce all these different things with casting. So it's just really, really important to be thoughtful with your story, too, about where you place all the girls. And then once you've done rotation, you do, um, you do the show fittings. So that's like fitting the girl in the clothes. And that's when you finalize all the accessories, you finalize shoes, you finalize the looks, you get everything Polaroided and ready to go.